Join live still. Now, I'm going to link everybody over to this channel, so hang tight one sec. Hang tight. Sorry. It's going to be really good. Uh, it's going to be worth it. Uh, all right. If I can just figure out how to link everybody over here. Copy that. Go here. All right. I am failing at setting up these uh, scheduled things and things keep bugging out. Um, so now I need to link everybody again. Thanks for coming over, guys. I see a couple of you here. Thanks for hanging in there. I am. I thought I was prepared to stream today, but something, uh, I don't understand the, there's like, you can stream from your webcam direct or you can set up, set it up with like an encoder. And I was trying to do that again and something's weird. It's all bugged out. So I'm glad that you've all made it here for drinking leather two or three, three. We did two days in a row now. So uh, today is going to be extra great because um it's getting hot out and i needed a i need to cool down <laughs> so uh when i was at the store yesterday i picked up this uh great divide roadie which this packaging kind of crushed it i love the way this looks um i i i don't I'm, i think it's the colors are really cool but also i really like uh, bicycles. So it's cool. The packaging that they did, uh, props to them. Um, we get a couple more people in here. I want to do something weird and try to link it out to our, uh, you know, 12,000 people on Instagram. But first I need to get a little bit of this. Here's the can, which is the same packaging uh, style. It's really cool. Apparently this is a, um, limited release. And I'm wondering, my first thought when people do limited releases is, um, especially in beverages, it's kind of like, why would you limit it if it's great? Um, so I'm worried. I get a little worried that they're not great. Um, but this one looks good. So let's pour it into this. I found the old Budweiser glass from the 80s I'm used to. So check this out. <laughs> I don't know. If, 84 Olympics. And again, I didn't get to use my cool Ashland bottle opener because these are cans, but whatever. Ooh. Back, ooh, that is grapefruity. Wow. I didn't even drink that, and it's blasting me with grapefruit. I could have used this ridiculous bottle opener made out of reverse shell cordovan. <laughs> but uh, the reason I bring it up is because uh, somebody was interested in one of these yesterday. Um, so I'm going to set up Justin with one of these. Um, but wow, I only took like a little tiny, it smells like pure grapefruit. So I know a lot of people that would like this. Um, my wife is obsessed with LaCroix, uh, Pamplemousse flavor. So this is something she would, she would really like this. It's not very sweet. It's almost like a LaCroix. Uh, very light. This is perfect for um, having some people over on Monday for barbecuing. So this would be really good for that. So we're just chilling out. Um, wow. Thanks for, uh, thanks a couple of you for coming here on this uh, holiday weekend. It's kind of weird to get, it's kind of weird to do one of these on a, on a weekend. That's a holiday, especially at night on a Saturday. So I'd imagine, um, you're sacrificing something to come check this out. Uh, but I'm going to make it worth your while because uh, I've got that really uh, refreshing beer here to chill me out. But I've also got some uh, Alan Edmonds shoes here that are really great. No holiday in Canada. You got to work on those holiday schedules there. But um, I've also got a really deep chat that I want to talk uh, or that I want to present about vegetable tan leathers and chrome tan leathers. And uh, it's, it's, I've actually spent a couple hours today um, just absorbing a lot of content that's already been put out about those two types of leathers on YouTube videos and doing some reading. And it's a lot of sort of half information. So I'm, I'm gonna try to clean, clean it up and clear it up the best I can. That reminds me, since I had to restart here, 
I need to open up my link. So if you do want to follow along uh, on that chat later, uh, I found the best, I thought I was feeling like the best way that I could approach it would be to find what Google thinks is the most relevant thing for vegetable tan. So I searched veg tan versus chrome tanned. And the first thing that comes up is a karyology blog post. So search in Google veg tan versus chrome tan. And it's got a uh, image at the top that has a picture of a hide with a leaf on it. And then a picture of a hide of like a, a beaker on it. <laughs> Uh, that says uh, the uh, chemical system, uh, chemical abbreviation for chromium. Uh, so that's the thing I'm going to be um, talking about. And specifically on there, I like their little chart that is, uh, it's got little bullet points that I'm just going to sort of go over one by one. Um, but there were also some alarming things that I saw on YouTube of sort of half truths, um, which I don't want to call those people out at all. Um, but I will try to bring up some of the stuff that I thought was a little misleading. So, uh, first up, I've got some Ridgeways here from Ellen Edmonds. Uh, you know what? I'm not, they're cool. So let's just get a look at them first. Uh, so when I bought these, the, they're actually probably, these are probably six or seven years old and I haven't worn them a whole lot and I didn't really wear them for the first year or so. Um, but the reason was is because of this orange was just not in my wheelhouse of style at all, especially the welt. So I felt that interestingly, uh, their marketing material did not show the orange this color. It is a very, very pumpkin orange. <laughs> it's very orange. It, it looks like fall or October, um, which is probably really appropriate to wear in those seasons. Um, and you can see I haven't really worn it a ton, but I've worn it a bit. <clears throat> I didn't really clean these up at all. In fact, I didn't clean them up at all. So they've kind of, they've worn it nicely. I haven't really had to do anything to them see a little bit of scuffing. I haven't polished these. I think if the most I've ever done would have been to brush them. Um, so these are cool, but the reason I picked them up is because this leather Dublin, which is what these shoes are made out of. This Dublin leather that we went over yesterday is the leather in those shoes. And Alan Edmonds was if not the first, one of the first companies to start making sh uh, footwear shoes out of the Dublin leather. And all of us at the tannery were super excited about this leather, um, mainly for the look and the feel and that, that awesome uh, bright luster. It's not in your face bright, as you can see on the shoe. It's just a good, a good luster. Doesn't look fake. Um, and that actually kind of leads me to what I think is interesting about this shoe. Uh, and also, I wouldn't have bought it if I knew that Walt was orange. So that's why I didn't wear it for a long time. It kind of turned me off. Uh, in the photos, it looked tan. So I thought it was a really cool, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like a chestnut-y, um, chestnut color. And the orange kind of threw it into a direction that is not really my thing. Um but these have a collar that is more suitable for dress shoe. So I would put these in sort of the dress shoe category uh, for that reason. But it's interesting that they chose this Dublin leather because I perceive the leather to be more of a casual look, although it's an awesome look. And I think uh, sort of leading back from our chat yesterday, we were talking about different leathers and what would be appropriate for a dress shoe and what wouldn't. This wouldn't have come to my mind as uh, the first thing to use as on a dress shoe because of the highs and lows in the color. And uh, also it's, it is a full grain leather. So you're going to see a lot of uh, natural variants and all of the imperfections are going to show up. So that's often a large challenge for some of these footwear makers to make that really clean dress shoe. Uh, and on top of that, orange is very much not dressy. So they've kind of taken the silhouette and styling 
of a dress shoe and put it into a jeans kind of guy world. So I've been wearing this. Uh, if I'm feeling really funky, I, I will wear it to a wedding, which I've actually worn these to a wedding. Um, and then you stand out quite a bit. And that's not really my thing. I don't like to stand out. I'm kind of a more uh, subtle in my style. Um, but I think it's cool that these go well with, with uh, jeans. And since this came out, it was, gosh, this must have been seven or eight years ago that these came out. They were quite far ahead of the curve um, as far as throwing in funky colors into classic styles. Because after this, I started to see a lot of stuff with Cole Haan, and they would do like a funky colored sole with a classic leather on top. It's almost more like an athletic sole, um, which wasn't really my thing, but I noticed them often. I, I would see them on the, uh, in the, in the city here in Chicago, we call it the L, the uh, mass transit train. I would see that uh, Cole Haan shoe very often. Um, but I was looking online. You can actually still buy these, but uh, Nordstrom sells it in a different color. I don't think you can get it in this color. So if you search Allen Edmonds Ridgeway, you can find a color like this that's available. I'm not really, I should look it up. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> uh, Allen Edmonds Ridgeway. Uh, right. Nordstrom has a pair of black with like a red highlight. And I don't think these are, they're sold out. So these are probably Dublin too. Uh, so I guess you can't really get these anymore. And I can't remember the last time we shipped Allen Edmonds uh, double another, so maybe they're just done. But they have a cool, uh, the one I'm looking at uh, on Nordstrom right now, instead of this chestnut color Dublin, they have a black Dublin and then red accents everywhere else. So it's sort of a deeper cherry red um, on the welt and on the, on the laces. And that's a pretty cool, and all these little uh, stitches are also red on that one. That looks pretty cool. I. I really like wingtips a lot. So that's the other reason I like this one. So it's kind of a cool, um, it's just different, something different to wear with your jeans. Um, and I often wear boots, but these are one of the only pairs that I have that aren't sort of boat shoes or mock toes um, that aren't boots. So there you go. Take that for what it's worth. What are you guys drinking tonight? I need a lot of this because I think it's, I might have to, if we hang out long enough tonight, I might bust out some whiskey because these, these, this seems very weak. This seems like, and I believe most Rattlers are, yeah, this one's 4.2%. It's really good, uh, but I just need to chill out. <laughs> All right. By the way, great divide roadie. It's pretty good. It seems um, from the few Rattlers that I've had, it seems perfect for a Rattler, that sort of summery beer for chilling out, barbecue and cooking out. Uh, weather getting warm. It's hot and humid in Chicago today. Brandy barrel aged Belgian golden ale courtesy of Boulevard Brewing. That's a lot of nouns. <laughs> um, that sounds fantastic. I... That was that is more my style. Um, I struggle with those barrel aged ones because I bet you that beer is 12%, and uh, that would beat me up. Who makes Monkey Shoulder? I believe I've seen that that uh, around, yeah. But those barrel aged beers are so great, it's just hard. I you have to treat them more like, or for me, I have to treat it more like a, a liquor, like you kind of sip on it, and um. I often like, um, it's kind of gross words, but I like larger mouthfuls. Like I like taking a big sip of it, a big gulp of it, 12.4%. Yeah, that's um, on episode one of this, we did the uh, victory at sea and that was 10, 10%. And I just had that one. And I was, at, when I was done with this, I was really feeling it. And actually last night I had, uh, one more beer after the one I had on camera and I was drunk. So I'm a total baby drinker these days. All right. I'm going to, let's get into the veg tan chrome tan chat. Um, how do I leave this off? 
there's sort of two worlds of leather that have become popularized uh, over the last several thousand years being the vegetable tan leathers. That's a technology that's very old. Um, and simply put, what they've done to tan leather um, before more uh, more chemistry was involved, uh, they would use a lot more natural things that would preserve the leather, but also impart tannins into it to give it specific characteristics. And those more natural ones, and it's appropriate to call it natural, um, those more natural leathers are, are called vegetable tan leathers. So if you want to go, again, I, I just... I thought it would be most useful to see what the world sees first. So I went to Google and typed in veg tan versus chrome tan leather and check out this cariology.com um, blog post. It's cariology.com slash insights chrome versus vegetable tanned leather and scroll down about two thirds of the way. There's a chart that I'm going to be reading off of and, and sort of critiquing. So I, I do think it's cool that they put a leaf next to the hide that is vegetable tan leather, and that's very accurate. And uh, I, don't, I can't figure out why they've why the word vegetable got thrown in there. And I've asked, and uh, we have to figure it out. Um, but when I hear the word veg tanned, all I think about is a tree bark extract or a liquor made of tree barks that the leather soaks in and it, it sort of soaks in, uh, in an analogous way to making tea. So instead of using tea leaves, imagine a tea made out of tree barks. And that is how we tan vegetable tan leathers. Um, every tannery has different, uh, formulations. Um, there's different uh, types of tree barks, but the, the largest tree that is used for the vegetable tanning is called Cabracho. Uh, that's Q-U-E-B-R-A-C-H-O. So if you want to look that up, it's kind of interesting too. Um, and it's a very traditional thing. You see a lot of vegetable tan leathers in soles of shoes. I was actually just looking down here. Uh, this one has sort of a commando sole cap on top of the veg. And the veg tan leathers are often found here. It's a very common place to find it. And that's because the veg tan leather is a lot more dense and firm. I remember actually yesterday was kind of interesting. I don't know what Wolverine uses for that thousand mile, but do you remember how easily I flexed the sole on that thousand mile boot? This one has no, I have to, I'd have to put it down on the table to flex it. I would say that's better. And as comfortable as the thousand mile boot is, I think there's something off on their veg that they use for the sole. So it's sort of, I suppose it's a zero sum game on this, on using um, different types of veg on your soles. And I'd say Viberg is the total opposite end of this the spectrum from thousand mile where their soles are incredibly firm and stiff. Um, somebody in here had mentioned yesterday that uh, the cork um, filler that they use in the insoles, below the insoles, um, that might be a culprit for the firmness. Uh, so I think that's something to talk about too. I should talk to a boot maker and I have plans to get some boot makers and shoemakers uh, to come chat with me in this room, <laughs> which would be kind of fun. Um, but veg vegetable tan leathers are often found on the soles. Um, there's other really cool stuff that you can do with veg tan leathers that you can't do with chrome tan leathers. And there's a craft called tooling. So any, if there's any leather crafters in here, uh, they probably already know all this, but uh, leather tooling is very cool. It's kind of like, um, it was really big in the 70s. I, I remember seeing a lot of movies where people would have tooled belts with their names on them. And all you really do is you soak the veg leather in water and you can impress different tools into that leather. So a uh, a leather tool uh, tooling person doing that craft would have many tools with different patterns and you can make really cool designs in the leather and a veg leather has a unique ability to hold any impression it actually will hold its shape very well too another really common place that i've seen veg leathers are in gun holsters 
And you'll find them there because the gun holster manufacturer can do the same uh, concept as the leather tooling where they dampen the leather and then they wrap it around a mold that is the form of a gun of that particular model gun. So if you let that leather dry fully, it becomes almost as firm as wood and it holds its shape. So that is that is a very unique and actually incredible thing that the veg tan leather does. And that is something that chrome tan leather will never do. So that I'd say it, the ability to hold its shape is very uh, special. What else can I say about veg? We did a little bit of the, uh, so this is a veg strip that I, I was talking about yesterday on a little key case that I make. Um, one of the videos I saw today um, when I was researching this a little bit, um, they claimed that the squeak you get I forget what their words were, but they said it's because it's the grain is is finished in a certain way, and that's inaccurate. That would not cause this squeaking. I think what's and I'm I'm not certain on this, but I think that squeak comes because the fibers on. Let me see if I can give you a close up here of the cross section of the veg. Uh, that is not working. Yeah, not HD enough, <laughs> but I will describe it for you. So you'll notice on vegetable tan leathers, if you look at the cross section of it, you'll notice that the fibers are very tight and tightly uh, bound together and tightly filled in. And the key here is actually the filling in between those fibers. And this leads me to another person I want to have on. Uh, we have it in the calendar right now for next Thursday for a leather chemist to come in and help me explain to you uh, what's actually physically and chemically happening between the fibers of all the leathers and different types of leather. Uh, he's already shared a lot with me. It's really fascinating. Um, but there are voids between those fibers. So think of it like a... Think of the leather as like a bucket of spaghetti and all of the fibers in the leather are analogous to the spaghetti strands. The more space between those spaghetti strands, the less dense it will be. And the closer they are, the more dense they are, the, the more dense the leather is. So I think what you're hearing here are those, the, the fibers trying to stretch and they're struggling which is kind of weird. I honestly, I don't really, it bothers me a little bit when my wallet squeaks a lot when I'm sort of shifting around. Um, and I know that's probably bad for business, but uh, it is true. It does have this squeak no matter if it's in my hand or if it's in my pocket. So I kind of don't like feeling like I have a diaper on <laughs> that I kind of don't like the concept of squeaking around. You're never going to sneak up on somebody as uh, Skip Horwin always tells, tells me, I think it's really funny. Uh, so vegetable tan leathers are really cool. Uh, they also have other than the forming, um, forming to a shape, which actually this key case, which we haven't dampened. If I take this flat, it's already started to form itself to this shape where it's snapped in. And I haven't done anything to this, um, but if you were to take a bit of water and soak it and leave it in the shape, it would be, um, it, it wouldn't even go up this high. Like you'd have to really hold it open. Um, the other cool thing about veg tan leathers that is very unique is that they patina. And I have yet to find out why patina happens. But let me first describe patina. Um, for me, patina has two, two different things going on, one of which is color. So you can see this right here. This is a very um, traditionally how you will find most veg in color, this sort of light tan shade. It's sort of this shade of skin. Uh, there's no dyes put in here. We would call this natural, um, but there's also the veg on this Ridgeway sole. Oh, focus. 
uh, that is also natural. So patina for color is that more that you wear this, the more opportunity it has to pick up moisture and oils from your hand. And in fact, pressure and friction will cause this leather to darken. So if you were to put it in your pocket and just walk around, it will get darker very slowly. And that's why it's cool. I think people, uh, including, I kind of went at the opposite way. People are really into uh, veg tan leathers right now for the same reasons that they're into raw denim. So I've got some really worn in uh, 316s right now uh, that have faded slowly. And it's really cool to have an item that ages with you where you can impart your personal style onto it. And it starts to become more of your person. It's a little bit more special. Um, so the, the people that like raw denim love how it ages with them. It forms to their to their legs and their body a little bit better. And same for veg tan leathers. It ages and forms to your style. So if you really baby it and leave it in a briefcase or a bag, you probably aren't going to get very much, if any, patina at all in terms of color or any patina. Um, but if you really wear it, it looks crazy. Uh, in fact... When I was looking at, I keep sparking new tangents, ADD. Uh, when, when I was looking at, uh, somebody was asking me where they could buy the shell Vibergs that I picked up. And I don't, I, to my knowledge, you can't just buy the ones that I bought. So I searched on Google, like you search for any, anything else. I searched on Google for where to buy uh, natural shell cordovan and Viberg boots. And if you look really hard, you'll find these natural shell Vibergs that are unlined that I believe were worn by a tattoo artist, and they just look incredible. So the, they've aged in a way that most people wouldn't want to treat their shell, but I think it's insane. So I think that would be worth looking up. Um, I'm just going to do a real quick search. Natural shell Viberg boots. And then hit images. Uh, they are they are the second image. So if you search natural shell Viberg boots, I think those are unbelievable. They've got a cap toe, and they're really really worn in. If you look at other natural shell boots on the same image search, you'll see the what, the color that they started, and how deep and dark they've become, and they look weathered and they look ancient. I think they look incredible. So I actually, that was uh, yesterday. You may have heard me talking about getting a little bit obsessed with online shoes. Click on that image, by the way, and go to their blog post, the viberg.com slash blog slash journals, repair service, boots, natural shell cordovan is where I'm at. And just take a look at how awesome those natural shell boots have patina. And this is worn by tattoo artist, So you can see spots where he spilled a little bit of, um, Tattooing ink. Um, but I just think they look incredible. So veg tan leather is great for that. So everybody should look up these natural shell fiber boots uh, that they restored. That is the reason to get veg tan leathers. Um, but often you don't see them as the main leather on a lot of boots. So we, we can we can get into that uh, a little bit later. Um, but patina is a huge thing. So not, not only does it change color, but if you look at those Vibergs or any any other piece of shell, in fact, on my website, just on the homepage, you can see what a natural shell Fat Herbie looks like uh, on day one or day zero, I think we write. And then you can look at what how it's aged over the last thousand days. And you can see very similar effects to these Viberg boots. It just develops this really deep layered uh, patina of color. So it starts to, and it will change on the angle you look at it. So you sort of range from a deeper brown to more of a yellowy golden brown that is extra special. And there's no way to fake that. Um, to draw a guitar analogy like I always do, um, that guitar is all natural with no finish on it or no staining on it. But um, you can find these days a lot of... Um, a lot of people that are in guitars will know about this, but there's something called relicking. So if you go and look at um, Fender or Gibson, I believe they do releases now where they fake relic guitars. And what they've done is they've 
removed layers of finish on new guitars to make them look old. And often they look really contrived. And I'll say sidebar, they've gotten a lot better at it these days. But that nothing really, nothing is really more special looking than something that is naturally aged and naturally worn in where you can see where the person's arm was hitting the body of the guitar. You can see the aging on the backside of the, of the neck. And that's sort of the same issue uh, or the same concept on these boots or my, my wallets. Could you possibly do a, uh, Vega V says, could you possibly do a blog post or something at some point showcasing how different Horween leathers patina? Yes. Yes, I can. And it's a very difficult challenge. Um, I could do that and it would take, I mean, it's going to sound like a jerk to say it, but it would probably take a thousand years to make that blog post <laughs> because um, the patina takes a quite a long time. Um, so on, you can see on that natural shelf at Herbie that has been worn for a thousand days. Uh, it looks really cool. Um, but I had to wear it for a thousand days. <laughs> and uh, every time I try to do like a time lapse, like I've done it before where I've made a wallet and tried to take a photo of it every day. I always forget about it after like a month and you don't see a huge change. Um, but the other reason it's hard is because Horween has so many different leathers and so many different colors. I It's probably more than a thousand years. <laughs> um, and actually the, the concept that you're bringing up is exactly why I started Ashland, exactly why I love the leather so much. Um, I would take little pieces of leather and put them in all the pockets of my pants. So I would carry around four different, just little cuttings of leather, like smaller versions of this. So I would take little off cuts um, from the production line and put them in my pockets just to see how they would wear. Um, cause I just thought it was such a cool concept to see how this changes and this evolves over time. And that sort of evolved into making wallets, which actually have a purpose. But, uh, then you run into the issue where you're carrying four wallets around all the time. So I've sort of, I've gone away from the four wallets, but my brother, uh, who works with me at Ashland now, he's actually doing, I think he's doing two or three wallets right now. Uh, for that reason, it's just, it's fun. It's really fun to see how the stuff changes. Um, I don't have my wallet in here with me uh, right now, but the one I showed yesterday on yesterday's stream that I messed up, I, I made a uh, mistake. I think something to avoid with these veg tan leathers or, or possibly most any leather is uh, wearing them and getting really warm and sweaty with denim on because the wallet will absorb some of the color from your raw denim. So don't wear raw denim and get wet with your wallet that is natural and veg. That would be a good suggestion. All right. What else can we say about veg tan leather? Do you have any questions about veg tan before I move on to Chrome? And Vega Beast, thank you so much for interacting. Um, I should mention to everybody that hasn't been here before, uh, the whole purpose of me doing this live is so I can answer your questions because I have this room here and I have cameras. Uh, I have fancy DSLR cameras that would probably be a better looking video, but I would just be all by myself. And uh, that's not very fun for me. And I actually think it's, I think it's better this way. Uh, so the whole point of this is to get you guys um, your questions answered try to clear up any confusion about stuff and uh, try maybe, maybe if you want, if you're looking and shopping around, picking between a couple of different pairs of boots or, um, or my wallets or anything, I can help, help point you in the right direction based on what you're looking for. And then everybody gets to learn from that. So that's sort of the idea of doing these live videos. But that's, that I, I would love if we could admit, like invent a machine that would just patina leather for me because then I can make a lot of great blog posts that would look really special. Let's talk about, let's talk about chrome tanned, uh, chrome tan leather. Actually, let me, let me just finish up on veg just a tiny bit here. Something that it, I overlooked is the amount of time it takes to process a piece of vegetable tan leather. So we make that tea of tree barks, and we let the leather, in the case of Cordovan, 
and this uh, horse hide strips, if you're looking to buy something, these are called veg strips from Horween. It's tanned alongside the shell cordovan. Both of these take two months, full two months in the pits. So we're talking about a technology that was developed thousands of years ago that takes two months just to start working on it. And in the case of Hor in the case of Horween shell cordovan, there's another four months to go of, of processing, which is mind blowing. Um, but two, two months is quite a long time for a company to drop money into hides. So if you figure uh, the hide market changes frequently, but let's just spitball. Let's say, let's say you're a tannery and you're small tannery. Small meaning you make about 50,000 uh, sides a year. So 25,000 animals worth of leather. That's very, very, very small. Horween is roughly five or six times the size of that. Um, but if you, let's say you just had to do a thousand hides a week or sides a week, which is 500 hides. That's a lot of money. If, uh, you have to spend $50 per hide. So let's figure, or f what is it? $50 per side. I don't know how much the hides cost anymore, but even if it's 20 bucks per side, you got to spend 20 grand every week and you're not going to get that out for another three months. So you got quite a bit of inventory cost and you're not turning over inventory very quickly. So it makes the veg tan stuff a lot more expensive. I would say that's the biggest driver of cost is the amount of time it takes for uh, veg tan stuff. And the tree barks are imported and they're very expensive. And there's we at Horween, we do something that I don't believe any other tannery does. And we actually cook our own tree barks in house. Uh, if you've ever seen, like, uh, what does it look like? The tree barks, when we get it, they look like little crystals. They look like little bits of amber that are stones, and they're very hard and dense. So we have to cook them down in a special formulation, and that takes time too, and it takes a lot of money because it takes a lot of energy to heat up that much uh, material and make it into a, a liquor. Um, so it's it, veg stand's expensive. Um, but that's not to say that chrome tan can't be expensive either. So there we go. Veg tan in a nutshell, it ages really, really well. It develops a great patina. Uh, oh, I didn't go into any, not any negatives. There are some negatives. The veg tan is, is kind of as dense as it, as it is. It's very, um, prone to ripping. It's not very strong. And some of these YouTube videos I watched today was saying how strong veg is. It's strong in the sense that it's thick. It can be thick, like on a sole of your shoe. But actually, the slit tear and tensile strength is very, very poor on the veg tan. So if you were to take this piece of veg and cut a little slit and try to rip it, it would rip like paper. It doesn't hold strength very well, where chrome tan does. Uh, what else have I missed? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to summarize it. Uh, it's expensive. Age as well. It's a little bit weak as far as um, uh, slit tear. Um, smells really good. Uh, it can hold its shape. That's the biggest stuff for me. And for me, like it's just about aging. I think it ages really well. And that's the coolest part. And it molds to your, your contents of the wallet. Or like a boot, it molds to your foot. Um, but if there's a liner on it, it kind of defeats the purpose, which is why I'm back. Like my brain is like, why would you want to line shell cordovan boots? Which is what I got. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, chrome tanned, and then I want to go through uh, the bullet points that Carryology has made. So, chrome tan leather is a more modern technology. It's very much different than vegetable tan leather, and the the technology itself, I believe, is about 200 years old. And the main driver for the technology is uh, the difference of the way that we're filling in the gaps and binding the fibers of the skin together. So in the veg tan leather, we're using uh, natural tree barks to bind those fibers together and to fill in the voids between the fibers. But in chrome tan leather, we're actually filling in those bonds with chromium sulfate. Uh, which I believe is chrome three. I could be wrong. 
Yeah, it's got to be three because I think uh, there's a carcinogenic a carcinogenic one. <laughs> there's a bad one. And I believe it's Chrome 6. Uh, but Chrome 3 is very stable and good. Um, and it's fine. And we use it every day and we've used it for many years. Um, but that's the big difference as far as uh, physically what's happening. And it's also quite uh, fast to make a chrome tanned leather compared to the veg. So this takes about two months in those tanning pits where the chrome tan leather takes two days in, uh, in a mill. In fact, it takes one day, but there's more steps involved in between. Uh, so maybe we should back up and talk about t leather tanning in general. So the first thing that we get in the tannery is a hide with hair on it. So it looks like it's straight off the animal because it was, and it's just been salted and cured for us at the tannery. So our first job is to get rid of all the salt, get rid of all the grime, and to remove the hair of the hide. The second step was actually a preparation step for tanning the leather itself. And again, next week on Thursday, I'm going to have our chemist from Horween come in and explain this in very great detail. But the second step for tanning any leather is called baiting and pickling. And this is a preparation step to accept the tannins that we're about to give it, whether it's chrome tanned or whether it's vegetable tanned leather. We still have to bait and pickle the leather. So those are sort of two days right there, no matter what. And then the third day, you can either go down the chrome tanning route, which takes one more day to chrome tan it with those chrome salts, or you can go down the vegetable tanning path, which takes about two months in pits. So th they're very similar up through the first two days, and then they diverge completely. Um, so in the chrome tanning, we use those chrome salts to bind all the fibers together, keep it really strong. And it actually turns the leather very blue. So if you've ever seen photos of a tannery, whether it's Horween or any tannery in the world, and you see these weird like pale blue shades, that's all chrome tan leather. So if they're telling you that all they make is veg and you see those pictures of blue, it's false. Um, one of the reasons that you would want to use chrome tan leather is because it's very resilient to heat and it's very strong, but it's also can be very soft and drapey. So because of the way that that chrome has bound the fibers of the leather together, it gives you quite a bit of flexibility, but it's heat resistant. Um, which I should mention, this is very, uh, bad with heat. So if you were to heat this up, it will crack. And it, my observation is that it's about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. If you heat this up, it, it changes the substance and it turns into more of like a potato chip and it sort of just cracks where the chrome tan leather can deal with steam heat. And that's very relevant for somebody um, like these Allen Edmonds shoes, although those are uh, not chrome tan. These are these are veg tan. But when a shoemaker is forming the leather around their last, which is the mold for the shoe, they have to pull it over that form. And oftentimes they have to heat it. So if they're using steam on a piece of veg, you will crack the leather and you will get shoes that you hate. <laughs> so that's one reason that you might want to use chrome tan leather. You know, often, fi often find it a lot in uh, soft bags. Um, it has very little stand to it. As opposed to this uh, veg, it's, it's firm. And if you were to make a bag out of it, it would just sit upright, very firm, sort of like a piece of wood. Or the chrome tan leather will just flop over if it has nothing else to support it up. Uh, that's a very uh, important one. Um, the other thing is, and let me think of negatives. Oh yeah, ne so negatives are important. <laughs> Negative for chrome tanning. I, t I tend to not see very much um, patina effect on pure chrome tan leathers. And that's kind of a bummer. So I'd say that's, that's the biggest negative. Um, and sometimes you don't want your leather to be very soft. Although I've made, um, we've made some firmer chrome tan stuff. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of gets complicated after this stage because just the veg tan versus chrome tan isn't enough information to tell you how to make a decision about something. Um, typically, veg tan leather, you do that de-herring, you do the baiting and pickling, and then you do the pit tanning, and you dry it, and you 
and put a little bit of um, your hot stuff oils into it to nourish those fibers back, and then you're kind of done. On the chrome tan leathers, there is always something called a retanning because that chrome tan and the retanning on this was that hot stuffing. Uh, and I should, we can get really detailed here, but uh, when you remove all the fats from the leather in the tanning process, you're making potato chips. So you have to re, you have to nourish the fibers of the skin again. And it's very important. And we do that with a process called hot stuffing. There's also a process called wet stuffing, but essentially all you're doing is putting fats and oils and greases into those fibers of the leather. So they are, they can flex. So every piece of leather has something called a retanage, which is hot stuffing, wet stuffing. They can actually uh, retan with more veg which is interesting and retanning a chrome tan leather. There's a lot of nouns here. So let me break that down. We've, we've taken a hide, we've removed the hair. We've tanned it with chrome salts and it looks blue. If you dry it out, it turns into a chip. So we have to take that chrome tan leather and retan it again by adding fats back into it. In that retanning process, we can actually introduce some of those tree barks again. Some of those vegetable tan characteristics we can impart into the chrome tan leather. And that's how a product called Chrome Excel was made. So Chrome Excel is chrome that is different. So we, they took their chrome leather base and they added very similar to the shell cordovan. They added tree bark extracts into that retanning process along with, uh, you can also add dyes and, and different colors at that stage. So something called, uh, if the leather is struck through, or if you can see the color all the way through the leather, um, we, that is the stage where we're introducing those dyes as well. It's kind of like when you dye an Easter egg, you take your little cup of water and you put a little bit of dye in the water and then drop the egg in. That is how we drum dye or mill dye leather. It's, it's sort of the, the same concept. Um, and then uh, you can also impart uh, different fats and uh, fat liquors at that point in time to give those nourishing oils um, or give the fibers those nourishing oils so it doesn't just crack. So th that's a very important designation um, to make is you've got sort of three things I've mentioned now, veg tan, chrome tan, and then combination. You can combine the two of them, which is really fascinating. So you get, you get a little uh, less of each. Maybe not less heat resistance. You get a little less patina-ing. I suppose it depends on the retan formula as well because there are an infinite amount of formulations that you can retan the chrome tan leather with. So it sort of depends on what you what you do with it. Um, but generally speaking, I don't see much. Uh, you, you see a little bit more patina effect on the combination tan stuff, but not as much, not even close to as much as a straight veg. And that's uh, very important. Um, you don't see factories, like you don't see Alan Edmonds saying that this is a, a veg tan leather. And I think they don't introduce these terms because they are this confusing. So I I'm even confusing myself right now, but uh, trying to keep it straight. You tan the leather, you retan the leather, you dry the leather, and then you finish it. And then you ship it out the door. All these stages, there are multiple variations of. So you can tan it in different ways. You can retan it in many, many, many different ways. And you can dry it in about five different ways. And you can finish it in an infinite amount of ways. So it's incredibly complex. Um, and that's why when people use these terms, it makes it so frustrating for me because they're misleading. So this is a piece of full grain veg tan leather in uh, chestnut color. But what does that really mean? Like, it doesn't matter to anybody if it looks stupid. <laughs> so I think, I think all the terms that people try to use to sell this are dumb. <laughs> I think we need what Vega Vis was saying earlier about, um, just show me how it ages. Like, that's what we really need to see. Because I can see that looks awesome right now, but how is it gonna look in a year? And how is it gonna wear in? Are these souls going to keep me from falling in the ice? I think that's the stuff that matters. And whether it's full grain or not, doesn't matter if you think it looks awesome. 
So this just happens to be full grain, but uh, there are plenty of corrected grain leathers that are very nice. And that's the top grain, full grain bonded leather topic that Saddleback talks a lot about is a little bit troublesome to me because it's, I think it's very misleading and it seems to be the standard now if people are using these terms like top grain, that doesn't mean anything at all. And it's, in fact, it means the opposite of what they say it means. They, what they should be saying is that there's really two things that they should be saying. It's full grain or it's corrected grain because top grain doesn't mean anything at all. Full grain leather can be top grain leather. So full grain or top grain, and then it's sort of like the aniline versus not, but that doesn't matter because you can see that. You can see that this doesn't look like paint. You can see that there are highs and lows in the color of this. So you don't really need to know how it was finished if it looks awesome. I don't care if it's aniline. I don't care if it's paint. I just care that you think it looks great. And for me, this, this looks cool. And actually that's why I don't like this little orange is because that is not aniline. It like looks fake. It sort of throws it off for me. It in person, it looks like it was spray painted. It looks really dumb. <laughs> Although I like them, I like them, but it doesn't look nearly as cool as the actual like real thing. Andrew Burt, I'm going to read your question here. And thanks so much for chiming in. I just went on a crazy fill rant. It makes me really angry. <laughs> it makes me angry with Miss. Like, if, I'm not really into Donald Trump, but uh, I can see why he says the fake news thing a lot because there's there's just bad information, like partial truths all the time. All right. Any sorting of hides to choose between veg or chrome, or is it based on orders and volume for the tannery? Um. I'm hesitant to answer because there are many tanneries in the world. So I'll just tell you my experience at Horween. And there at Horween, there is no difference. We, we actually do those first three steps. We remove the hair, we prep the leather for tanning, and then we tan it. And then after that, we sort them. And, and uh, the reason we do that is because they're all the same. I call it like a canvas. They're all the same canvas at this point. So we all we have these stacks of blue leather in the case of chrome tan leather. And then what we do is we look at our orders and we see that Wilson really wants football. And we see that Alan Edmonds really wants Dublin. And we see that Timberland really wants Chrome Excel. And we we have to look at these stacks of blue and pick them out for each of those products specifically. So uh, for example, let's say that uh, Wilson has been having manufacturing issues and they can't deal with scratches right now. So we'll sort out those those blue sides into uh, th things that don't have scratches and then do have scratches. And we'll put the ones without scratches for that football in that example. So it's, uh, and, and that is very much demand-based, uh, especially at Horween, which is a business decision that they've made it to be made to order. We don't stock anything on purpose. <laughs> uh, sometimes I, a big industry secret that, uh, I guess it's not a secret. It's not really exciting. Maybe it's a secret that's not exciting. Uh, one of the big things about uh, tanneries that a lot of people don't understand, especially when they're made to order like Corween, is we accept an order for, say, 10,000 feet of leather, which is roughly 500 uh, sides of leather. That's a good order for us. Um, but we'll accept that order and process the 500 sides, and we might only get 9,950 feet. So you're never able to actually get the exact amount because every animal is different and things happen along the way. And the, the opposite of that is also true where we might get that 10,000 foot order for 500 sides of leather and we'll process those 500 sides and get 11,000 feet. So we end up with an extra thousand feet of leather that the customer may not take. And often we try to twist their arm a little bit to get them to take it because it's sort of not... Um, it's, it's healthy for both of us to um, use uh, the relationship that nature has given us because <laughs> um, they know that they would put the tannery out of business if they didn't accept any overages. Um, so that's a pretty good question about uh, orders based on volume. Um, 
and it is purely demand driven. So um, we don't we don't make batches of anything unless there's a, an actual customer purchase order for it. Hopefully that helps. I don't know if I went like way off. <laughs> Um, chrome tanning. Um, so like I said, well, let's talk about some of the hits for chrome tan leather. And I'll, now that I think about it, a lot of the hits happen to be combination tanned, which you'll never hear, or I don't see those words thrown out often, the combination tanned word. Um, and I think that's because you can't say it's veg, but it does have veg characteristics. So thinking about one of the biggest veg characteristics that it holds its shape, you might imagine what a football looks like with those pebblings on it uh, so the player can grip the ball. Well, that has to have some veg in it. Otherwise, it wouldn't hold that shape. So football leather is chrome tanned with vegetable retainage that allows it, it actually is quite a bit of veg, that allows it to hold that pebble. Uh, and same with chrome Excel. Chrome Excel has a good amount of vegetable retain in it um, that gives it a really nice sort of, what does it give it? You know, I've never made Chrome Excel without the veg in it, so I don't know what it does specifically, but it gives it a great natural look. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, what else is really popular that is chrome tanned? I'd say everything you see in a car is chrome tan leather because it has to be resistant to heat. So that's a chrome tan leather. Do you guys have any thoughts about the chrome tan stuff or do you have any questions about it? Because I want to, I want to go line by line on this guide that Cariology has made us. In fact, let me link that. That was that probably would have been smarter to do earlier. There you go. I've linked the uh, what I'm going to be referring to. So on that page, I'm going to type this too. Scroll two thirds <laughs> of the way down to. Oh, Dow, down to the bullet points. And that chart is what I'm going to be looking at here. Um, you know, I'm going to say it again. I failed the stream earlier and this one too, I sort of failed because I'm trying to use this like hosting. I'm not really sure what it is. It's just probably why I can't get it to work. But there's this thing where you can have your streams hosted. This one's just straight from my webcam to you. But there are other little pieces of software where you can do little bits of slideshows and stuff. So that's what I was trying to do. I wanted it to be even more valuable. Um, but everybody open that up and go, um, go about two-thirds of the way down. And the chart you'll be looking for says vegetable tan leather versus chrome tan leather. It's got icons of each at the top. And I'm going to try to read it on this screen. All right. I might need another beer. This Rattler's not strong enough. All right, last chance to uh, answer any questions about Chrome Tan before I read the chart here. You know what? I'm going to link this uh, blog post that Vibrick did. Can't type. All right. How you guys doing, by the way? Enough about me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna open another one of these. This is not nearly strong enough. All right, everybody get your cariology ready to go. All good there. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm sorry that you don't get the long weekend like, um, us Americans, it's going to be good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the chart here on Cariology. Uh, this is a blog post that looks like they wrote. Let's see when they wrote it. 
Doesn't say. Yeah, it does. They wrote it in August 2015. So I don't think this will be dated at all. But I think um, what that tells me is that there's an opportunity for me to write a better blog post that's more recent. What did you have last weekend? Is it like Boxing Day 2? <laughs> Double Boxing Day? I'm going to get to the chart here, guys. All right. Vegetable tan leather versus chrome tan leather. All right. So number one, under vegetable tan leather, they've written, because of the way it's tanned, the colors of vegetable tan leather are usually rich and deep in natural earthy tones. So that's really true. And I think if you, the reason that that makes sense, if you think about it, is because we have to use so much of that tree bark extract and impart that between the fibers of the leather. Pardon me. Uh you're only going to get sort of tree bark color. So most of them are earth tones. And further to that, a lot of these leathers, where did my strip go? There it is. In order to nourish this so it doesn't just crack, we have to impart those greases and waxes and oils. So that's another reason they're all sort of earth tones is you don't have bright colored oils. So that is that's that is a fact, and I'm glad. I'm going to give them a point. <laughs> Let's give him a point. All right. Number two, being an entirely organic material, vegetable tan leathers will change over time. It will grow softer and darker and will acquire, and will acquire a patina depending on its uses. So that's true. We talked about that a little bit too. Um, the one word that threw me off in there a little bit is softer. I don't know if that's true. I guess softer is true because the more you flex this, the more those... Um, fibers that have been bound together, the more that they'll separate. So that that's true. Softer. Um, let's go next. Uh, vegetable tan leather has a great durability and strength and can, if well cared for, potentially last several lifetimes. So this is where we get into the half-truths. So durability and strength uh, compared to what? Um, I mean, I guess. But if this, like, I might even be able to rip this. Should we try? This is pretty thick, but typically when you get sort of a, in fact, if you stitch too close together on something made out of edge and perforate it, like any stitching, like this is stitched, this is my bottle opener. Uh, but if these stitches were tighter together, you could potentially have a situation where your veg tan leather will just rip and it, have, it will have more, um, it's more prone to tearing than the chrome tan stuff. So that's kind of not true. Um, I'd say durability, yes, but strength, it depends on like what type of strength you're talking about. Because if you're just punching it, yeah, it's really strong. Um, but let's see if I can actually rip this. Yeah, there you go. Bummer. So veg is very weak and uh, I'm glad it ripped, but I'm kind of sad it ripped. Um, but I told you so. It's not strong. So that is a falsehood. Bummer. Now I have to throw this out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, and you can kind of see how, like, let me move my, um, my fancy karyology chart here. But you can see how sort of pillowy that is inside. It's, the fibers have just exploded because they don't have any chemical, I guess chemical, yes, but they don't have um, that, that chrome in there to bind all that together. So even though this is quite thick, I'd say this is about a seven ounce piece of leather. It's very thick, even though it's thick and it has the grain on it. That's another thing I saw in these YouTube videos. The Saddleback guy, I'm going to call him out. <laughs> He said the grain is so strong that you never rip it. That's obviously not true. I just ripped it. Um, so that's kind of kind of a bummer and misleading. Um, then again, you'd have to be an idiot to rip it like I just did. Like who is using their key case in that way? And I think a lot of places that manufacture shoes or anything are aware of. Uh, maybe they're not aware. 
but they might be aware that things tend to rip if you put like a little slit on it, especially if it's made out of veg. So veg is easily ripped and I would say great durability and strength, maybe not. So that's, they are two out of three right now. Bummer. Good demo though, right? <laughs> All right, uh, scratches fairly easily, but shallow scratches can be buffed out. Yeah, yeah, I would say it actually scratches in a different way. Um, both of these leathers, leather types will scratch. Um, I guess if it's a suede, you can't scratch it because it's sort of already scratched. But let's take, I don't have anything abrasive. Is this abrasive? Not really, but I'm going to move this out of the way again. Hold on. So I've got my, this is a stainless steel bottle opener. It's been smoothed out. Um, I guess it has like a little bit of a texture, but we should be able to like really gouge it. Um, I don't know if this will work. I guess you can see how it's scuffing a little bit, but it's not like, it's not bad. I can see where I've affected it for sure, but um, I'm gonna do this with my fingernails. I mean, that's not scratching very much at all. So I'd say uh, kind of true, probably not true. I would say because it's so dense, it's having a harder time scratching. Um, but they are correct that these seem to just rub out with my finger. So I give them a half point there. What are they? Two and a half out of uh, four. All right. Has a distinctive fragrance. The sweet, earthy fragrance you probably associate with leather is the smell of vegetable tan leathers. Ah, yes. And I, I don't know if this is a... Because it says verses at the top. I'm going to give them a no points on this because... Chrome tan leathers can smell great too. This does smell very, I think they've described it correctly. I don't know about sweet though. I don't know about earthy either. Maybe I, maybe they didn't describe it properly. It just smells like leather and I think it's a very unique scent. And it's quite pungent. Um, I'd say depending on the chrome tan, maybe equally pungent to some chrome tan and maybe more pungent than others. I, I don't know. I'm going to give them a zero on that because uh, chrome, chrome Excel smells really good. Um, we actually, <laughs> speaking of chrome Excel smells, we had been tinkering around with making a candle out of the chrome Excel hot stuffing blend of waxes and oils. Um, so that smells really good. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, you had Canucks had Victoria Day. Is that for the queen? Do you guys have a queen still? I think you do. We just have a man-child president. Don't ban me. Oh, uh, what? Okay, prolonged exposure to... Okay, I'm on number one, two, three, four, five, six on the veg tan chart. Prolonged exposure to heat can cause the leather to crack out a crack to dry out and or crack. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I think you have a queen moose. Yeah, with the veg stuff, that's what I was talking about. I think that's one of the, the big problems is it's um, if this was resilient to heat, you probably wouldn't see chrome tan leather. I would say that's the differentiator right there. But yes, this is it's, they got a point on that. That's great. Um, very much, um, it cannot deal with temperature above a, about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, it starts to cook itself and crack. In fact, you, if you left it in a car uh, in the sun, in the direct sun, you might even damage it that way. Um, and unfortunately, I've, uh, it's really sad for me. Um, but every now and then, I'll have a customer that will buy a wallet that. It's a really nice piece of shell. And um, one of these guys was a construction worker working a really hot summer. And uh, in his truck, he was 
sitting in his truck and it was so hot and he actually cooked the leather a bit and it actually affected the appearance of the leather. And it sort of, it looked like a really dull spot sort of right in the center of it. And I, it's my suspicion that he cooked it, um, which sucks. All right. The last one on the, uh, oh wait, you guys are talking. A queen moose. <laughs> I saw a ridiculous picture today of on, uh, I think I saw it on Reddit of this uh, moose like eating its own like shedding of its antlers. You guys are hardcore in Canada. <laughs> uh, the queen is still on our money. We essentially a colony. Yeah. Yeah. You got to uh, have a revolution. Have a moose army. All right. This is fun. We got one more on uh, veg tan. And interestingly, they, it seems like they've left off some some of the stuff I talked about that I thought was very important. All right, second beer is fully in the glass. So cheers, everybody. All right. Uh, vegetable tan leather is not water resistant. Water can cause splotches or marks eventually becoming part of the patina. That's true, too. Well, they did a pretty good job, uh, honestly. Um, like I said, it's not, it's never like people are being fully misleading. It's just sort of like, like they heard it from somebody or they read a thing and then made a sentence and that sentence is halfway. It's like half misleading, which is uh, troublesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to really say about that, but they got, what did they get? Um, I think they got like three and a half points. It's not bad. It's like a D or an F. What is it? There's not 10. Um, well, let's go on to uh, to chrome tan leathers. And number one on their list is that chrome tan leathers are available in a huge variety of colors. Yes, but if this is a versus question, vegetable tan leather also is available in a huge variety of colors. So eh, wrong. <laughs> Failed. That is not true. Um, in fact, uh, you can find plenty of those. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, leather tooling. You can find a lot of awesome uh, leather crafters that will actually dye these uh, veg. And it's actually quite easily dyed. So it's strange that they put that in there as a unique feature of chrome tan leather. That is not true. Let that sink in. <laughs> all right number two the color will remain uniform and the leather will not develop a patina as fast or to the same degree as veg tan leathers i think that is i want to give them a point i'm going to give them a half we should <laughs> all right let's drink for their zero points on number one But yeah, um, I kind of like, <laughs> I'm also kind of sad that, because I don't really like being mean, but um, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun to make it into a drinking game. So I'd say that's a great idea. Uh, and I don't want to pronounce your name because I'm scared to, but I'm going to do it. Uh, Honoris A. Pari Pariam. Partia, uh, par Patriam. Thanks for uh, chatting me up. That was really funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the second one here, and for those of you that are sort of just popping in, we're looking at this blog post from Carryology where they've done a comparison on vegetable tan leathers and chrome tan leathers. So if you look back up at the Carryology link I put in chat, we're about two thirds of the way down on that page and there's a chart for vegetable tan leather versus chrome tan leather. And so far, we're finding that they're about half truth and half not truth. I'd say half truth and then half misleading or not the full truth. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> so speaking of uh, number two, I think, I think they're half correct. So they write, the color will remain uniform 
and the leather will not develop a patina as fast or the same degree as vegetable tan leathers. So they're saying two things there, which is why I want to give them half. Because the second half of that sentence is fully true. The chrome tan leather definitely will not develop a patina as fast or to the same degree as veg. That is true. And I won't drink for that, but I'll drink a half drink because chrome tan leather doesn't have a unique ability to remain uniform and the color to stay the same. In fact, the color will change. So that's not true. Drink it up. <laughs> I like this game. You just made my night. Everybody got your drink? All right, drink. You got to drink a half. All right, number three. <laughs> Number three for chrome tan leather is softer and suppler. I'm not sure if that's a word, so we might have to make them drink for that. Suppler than vegetable tan leather. Let's Google that. Let go to the judges. Suppler. Nope. Oh, I guess there is a comparative adjective, suppler. So maybe they're right. All right. Well, they got that one. That is true. Chrome tan leather is uh, often, I'd say more than not, although it doesn't have to be softer. Let me think about it. Yeah, I think the characteristics of chrome tan leather in general is uh, that it is softer. And vegetable tan leather characteristically is more firm. So that is true. And that is easy truth. So I guess if they get it right, they drink. <laughs> she call these guys up. Um, now I already read the next one, but number four for chrome tan leather is fairly resistant to water stains and heat. Uh, they got two wrong out of three. So they're one third. Okay. So chrome tan leather is not inherently resistant to water. That is false. Chrome tan leather is not inherently resistant to stains. That is false. And chrome tan leather is resistant to heat. So that's true. So they got one out of three. Um, and this is sort of where those half-truths come in. They're really kind of bum you out. Because um, I think I need, I know where they're going with it. They want to say they're ge too general. Because I can make I can actually make you a waterproof leather that is fully waterproof. And the water will not penetrate it. Um. But I can also make you, in fact, Chrome Excel is very resistant to water, but if you flex it, it will go right through it in about 10 flexes. So that is not water resistant. So I, I just can't give them that at all. Resistance to stains. I don't even know why they would put that in there. I don't know why they put the water in there either. Why would they put that in there? <laughs> it's not resistance to stains at all. Because you could drop actual stain on it and it will stain it. That's okay. I'm going to give them a full wrong on that, even though the heat one is really important. Um, but everybody, cheers. I don't know why they would say that. What are they trying to say? I'm, I wonder, I want to figure out what their agenda is. Like, are they trying to sell something? It's weird. Maybe they're just trying to put points in these bullet points and just fill the space. I don't know. All right, we're in the last one here. And I'm kind of sad because this is actually turning out really fun now. <laughs> now that we're drinking every time they're wrong. But let's go to the last one here. Um, chrome tan leather. The fibers of chrome tan leather are not able to show through the same way they do on vegetable tan leather. I don't even know what this means, to be honest with you. And I, I, um, the other thing is, is I didn't read any of this before our chat here, so I didn't know that this would be on here. But uh, let me read it again because this makes no sense. Um, I'm going to really pay attention this time. Uh, the fibers of chrome tan leather are not able to show through the same way they do on vegetable tan leather. What do you guys think they mean by that? Because I, I legitimately don't know. The fibers of chrome tan leather are not able to show through. The fibers. 
I I'm actually at a full loss. I guess they might mean the grain character is not able to show through, but that's not true. The fibers, because the fibers are like again, if you look at this, and I know you can't see it because it's not able to focus on something so small. But if you look at the cross section of this, those are the fibers that I would imagine they talk about because they're all sort of wound in there like that spaghetti we were talking about earlier. And yeah, those fibers are meshed together. And then on top of those fibers, I think of these fibers on the bottom, sort of like the foundation of the house. And everything stands on top of the foundation, which is the grain. And the grain is like the framing of the house. And then I'd call like any finishing you put on top of it, like the roof, roof of the house. So yeah, I, Andrew, uh, that is what I was originally thinking. Uh, I guess originally I was thinking that that makes no sense, but I was trying to make it make sense. But if you read that and re it replaced the word grain uh, or replace the word fibers with grain, it doesn't make any sense. So let's do that. So the grain of chrome tan leather is not able to show through the same way as it does on vegetables. To show through, the grain to show through. Do they mean that the grain is less pronounced on chrome tan? Because that's 100% false. I don't know. I guess you're not the author, so I shouldn't get mad at you. <laughs> All right, that is a false. So let's drink. In fact, uh, who said that? Um, who said that we should drink every time they get one wrong? Uh, onerous. Um, that it seems like what drinking leather should be all about. <laughs> I think you hit the uh, jackpot there because I really like that. Yeah, drink it up, guys. Because uh, so let's go through this again. I I think that I think they got like half correct, and then half was like not really. Does that sound right? Okay, vegetable tan leather, rich in earthy tones. Yes. Vegetable tan leather, entirely organic. Yes. Vegetable tan leather, change over time. Yes. Grow softer and darker. Softer. Yeah, yeah, we gave him that one. So that's two. Has great durability and strength. No. So that's not true. Uh, scratches fairly easily and lots of scratches be buffed out. So that's three. Has a distinctive fragrance. Not really. I mean, it smells great, but it doesn't smell uh, greater or less great than chrome tan leather. So not really. It, if they're doing a comparison, that doesn't make sense. Uh, prolonged exposure to heat can cause the leather to dry and crack out. Yes. So that's four. Not water resistant. That's true. Water can cause splotches or marks eventually becoming part of the team. That's true. So I guess they got five out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's pretty good on the veg. And then on the chrome tan they got is available in a huge variety of colors. Uh, I'm not giving them that. The color will remain uniform and the leather will not develop a patina as fast or to the same group. Um, I didn't give them that either, right? Because it doesn't, it won't remain uniform. I give them a half on that. Is it softer and suppler than that's true? So one and a half and resistant to water, one third. <laughs> so what's the one half was one third? Uh, fibers, yeah, they they kind of blew it on the chrome tan stuff. So I, to me, that says that people don't really understand uh, what chrome tan leather is, and I could see why. It's because it's super confusing, and you don't often just see like straight up chrome tan leather. And uh, nobody's trying to sell you leather that says it's chrome tanned. And um, there's probably probably a good reason for that. Um, because a lot of stuff, like I'm trying to think of all the shoes I own. I think they're all either straight veg or combination tanned. I don't own, I guess, you know what? I own some like Nikes and New Balance stuff. And those are straight chrome think but um so that's really i thought that's kind of uh interesting it's also interesting that um they got about half of them right well what else should we do because um this beer is almost gone i'm kind of let's let's go back to the beer so 
I have a new opinion. And it, this happens every time with Rattlers or any beer that's like kind of sweet. And this one is not overly sweet. I should say that. For, for everybody, again, that's sort of just joining, check out this awesome box. Uh, so this is a Grape Divide Roadie. It's a grapefruit, grapefruit Rattler. I love the colors on this packaging. On my screen, it looks like a pure blue, but this is more of like a greenish teal with an orange and a yellow. So that's really beautiful. And it says it's a limited release. So I bet you it's limited because it's more of like a summertime thing. Um, when I first took that tiny, tiny sip of this, I was blown away with how like fresh grapefruit. I have a bunch of more beers. <laughs> Uh, I will get them, but I was blown away by how awesome uh, that fresh grapefruit grapefruit flavor was. <laughs> grapefruit flavor, uh, and now I'm kind of angry at it. <laughs> it's uh, and this happens every time with Rattlers. It's like the the first couple sips are so good, and now it's just like it's like I have a like candy in my mouth. I'm gonna get a different beer. You guys want to hang out a little longer? Give me one, uh, one yes, and I'll hang out, and we'll drink some more. Ooh, a question. Double o o seven. <laughs> yeah, we and you probably should teach me about beer too. Um, cause for me, I just like what I like and I don't really do a lot of work reading about it. Like I do for all this other stuff, but let's read this. Um, uh, seems like a deep question here from 007 regarding companies that specifically mention they use chrome tan leather. Recently, I was looking through Mont Blanc's backpacks and they specifically mentioned chrome tan and Saddleback does too, huh? That's crazy. You know what, man? Can you, um... Would you mind, so I don't have to type on this loud clicky keyboard, um, you want to link me some stuff? Because that's awesome. It's really interesting that that they're actually talking about it. <laughs> the senpai of my hops. All right, so in my fridge, I have one more of my, one of my favorites that, um, what did we do on episode one? Um, oh my God. He did a whole video on on Chrome Tan. I think I saw that where he rides in on the on the cow. Yeah, it's really insensitive. Um, uh, but I have the uh, Victory at Sea in the fridge. I have some old, um, not old, but it's been sitting there for a while. Um, like chocolate stout or some porter, vanilla porter from somebody else. Um, and then I got a local uh, new one that I haven't seen before from Half Acre um, that I was going to do today, but I was kind of interested in the packaging of this. I should probably grab that Half Acre. Um, you know, I'll be, give me a minute and I'll be right back with a different beer and I'm going to dump this one out. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a second, guys. doing it all right check out this beer um i'm really happy to say that i know this guy um this brewer and i have a crazy story too you like crazy stories all right and you might ask yourself why do i put these headphones on 
it feels different to talk to you or anybody with headphones on and i really like it um it just feels like i exist <laughs> it's like i'm in my own head so check out this awesome packaging um from half acre i have never seen this one and i don't know how recent or not recent it is it does say 2019 on the can Wow, it's almost focusing. Um, but I have a half acre story. This brewery, uh, there's Chicago guys. I don't, th I don't know how far they distribute, but um, uh, <laughs> it turns out there's a really cool story with this. Um, Gabriel, um, you know what? I forget Gabriel's last name. Uh, Gabriel, the owner for Half Acre, is a really awesome guy, and. He happens to be a Horween fan. He's actually a little bit of a, or not a little bit. I don't know how much, what to what extent of a leather crafter he is, but he actually does um, leather working himself, which is really cool. And we had a opportunity to swap tours. So we gave him a little tour of Horween and then uh, Gabriel took Nick and myself to uh, the new half acre location. They have an older location. That's a really small, like, garage and they have absolutely actually he showed us both places but they've absolutely maximized out that place he showed us every little nook and cranny they've built it up they use every uh cubic foot of that place it's up and down left and right it's full and they run all of their new development there so i wouldn't be surprised if this came from um them just playing around but he showed us their their new uh brewery which is very impressive it's really nice and big and they make a lot of beer now and i don't think they distribute very much outside of chicago so this is not the uh so this is ipa but it strikes me as a little bit uh a little less of that sort of pine tree um bitter flavor and it's it's not it's not sweet but it's like a really rich um for me, it's like a really rich IPA. I wonder if this is another one of those unfiltered ones. That's really good. But uh, also the other thing that I thought was really cool is their packaging. So this is the bottom, 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 bodem. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Bottom. <laughs> um, yeah, the one the beer I had on here last night was um, an unfiltered IPA, and I think they started using the word "juicy," which is like a weird word to me. I don't know what that even means, but it was it's so good. Um, another local place called Maplewood that does a really juicy IPA that I like a lot. It's called Son of Juice Pants. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you know what? I just realized I ran out of topics to talk about other than um, this Saddleback issue you just brought up and the Mont Blanc thing. Let's see what the can says. Uh, it does not say. It says one pint, bottom, in the past, in the future, half acre, India Pale Ale. In the past, in the future. Let's look it up. That's what the internet's for, right? That's what we got two screens. Bottom, uh, half acre. And I will link it to you. Here you go. Oops, I put an extra slash in there. So it says, our newest Bedrock IPA bottom represents how we're feeling about go-to and IPA in today's spectrum of plants and brewing perspective. What the hell does that mean? Gabriel, I got to talk, man, about the... Uh, we got to talk about your copywriting because that doesn't do anything for me. Idaho 7, Mosaic, Cryo, and Cashmere spread over a silk-rich grist. I don't know what any of that means. Honoris, you will teach me. Let's see. Uh, beer Advocate's on here. Let's link you that. I'm looking at that. 
They're giving it an exceptional. I'd say it's very good. But again, like I don't really know what I'm doing. It's it's not bitter like every other IPA I've had. It seems very um, full and not bitter and kind of sweet. Yeah, it's fruity, but it's not. Um, it's not like God. Maybe I'm just like blasted by this grapefruit rattler. Um, it's like way different fruitiness than that. It's like that sort of juicy fruity flavor. Maybe that's the hops that, um, is that the mosaic is the one I like then I think. So let's look that up. Um, what was the beer? The son of juice pants. Oops. Son of juice. And we'll find out what hops they use. Um, but yeah, loads of mosaic Simcoe and nugget hops. So I think I like mosaic like a lot. It's very, um, it's like sweet in a way that doesn't suck. <laughs> you know, it's like, a, it's like a, I don't know how to describe it. But these are, you're teaching me stuff. I don't know why they wouldn't write that stuff on the can. Um, the other thing that bums me out is the trend of um, the big cans and like four packs of big cans. I guess it's fine. Um, I guess it's fine. I kind of like a little less, especially this is 6.8%. Like this is going to blast me. And uh, that's a lot of beer for 6.8. I kind of wish, wish it was just like a six pack of 12 ounces and more expensive. Um, but maybe I'm just a baby. Yeah. So this is a new beer. Uh, I guess I got lucky. We have a lot of good. We're in Honoris. Where are you from, by the way? Because... Um, Oh, try and find some hoppy beers brewed in New Zealand. Wow. All other hops tend to be on the fruit, juice, succulent end of the spectrum. Canada, eh? Yeah, I don't know. What's the beer scene like in Canada? Because um, the places that I've visited recently, everybody seems to claim that they have, and this was not in Canada, but they all seem to claim that they have great beer. And I think they're actually right. <laughs> The uh, so I live in the Midwest where we're like really known for uh, the Great Lakes. So a lot of breweries have popped up around the Great Lakes, like all the stuff in Milwaukee. I mean, they have a baseball team called the Brewers. Um, so we do a lot of beer here in the Midwest now, and I think there's something special about the water that comes out of Lake Michigan. And I think that same reason is why Horween makes really good leather. I think there's something with Something in the water in Lake Michigan um, that is doing something special. And I don't know what it is, and I can't confirm that. But it seems to make great beer, and it seems to make really good leather. I do need to find beer brewed in New Zealand. So I'm looking for suggestions. Anybody that's had a New Zealand beer, shoot it in here, and we'll talk about it. Um, are you in Vancouver? Um, you know, I've never been to Vancouver, but I did go to Victoria, which was, I thought was really fun. Yeah. Beers. And I feel like, um, tell me if I'm wrong, but my perception is people are kind of backing off beers right now. Um, a lot of my friends seem to be reverting. Um, maybe I've just been hanging out with a different crowd or something, but they're kind of getting into, uh, what are they into? They're into Modelo, which is, I mean, it's fine. Um, but it's not like exciting for me. All those like big brew stuff. Um, doesn't really do much for me, but it's fun to just hang out. But I feel like a lot of people are going back that way. Like they don't want like the most insane challenging thing to drink all the time. 
Central Alberta. Okay. Eight Wired sounds familiar. And I am not familiar with that, but it sounds familiar. Central Alberta, one province. Okay. And craft breweries are big growth areas for new businesses in rural eastern Canada. But I have no idea if they're making good beer or not. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's what makes me think is – um. So, like, I'm, I've got – where's Great Divide? I think Colorado. Yeah. Great Divide's in Denver. But um, Chicago has – I mean, I'll just talk about the places I've been in the last couple of years. Chicago has really good beer. San Diego has insane beer, and they don't even have water. So that makes no sense. Colorado seems to have great beer. Where else have you know what is crazy that I went to that had really good beer was um, New Mexico and they have no water. So I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how these people are doing it, but uh, it seems like there's just good beer everywhere right now, which is really cool. In Canada, I'm sure you guys got a lot of good water as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, you, my Canadian friends, um, everybody that I've met from Canada, and I've had one of the great things about having this uh, little business that we got going is I get to meet so many people. And I've actually had several people uh, come visit me from Canada, and you guys are so nice. <laughs> I just I just love being around. Uh, everybody I've met from Canada has been so cool. Um, so you guys are, maybe it is in the water. <laughs> uh, Almanac Brewing. Hey, you know what the sours, why is it that every sour tastes the same? I, I Maybe I don't understand. Maybe I just suck. <laughs> but it seems to me like every sour I've had is relatively similar. And I don't know what that's about. And it's also my understanding with the sours is it's really hard for them to control that process. Um, because they have to sort of leave the fermentation going, or maybe this is just the place I'm thinking of is called Jolly Pumpkin. Are they still a thing? Let's look it up. Jolly Pumpkin. Yeah. They're over here in uh, Michigan. Or maybe they're not. No, oh, Chicago. But I heard um, maybe this is not it. Brewery, it is it. Jolly Pumpkin, Michigan. Yeah. So what I heard about this um, Jolly Pumpkin place is they leave open these. I guess they'd be like vats, um, and they just leave it for nature to come in and blast it with all its nature's power. So they can't really control it that much. So if I were to try sours and really give it a full effort to try to understand them, would you suggest getting like little shot glasses of maybe five different flavors and just trying them and seeing if I can tell the difference or how would you go about it? Yeah. I really got nothing else to talk about tonight that I can think of, by the way. Unless you want to look at these shoes again. <laughs> you know, maybe we should talk about like where to get. That'd be cool if I could get a, um, I can start looking at my face, <laughs> which I know how much you'll want to see my face. It would be really cool to put up like uh, my screen and sort of scroll through eBay together and try to find good Cordovan deals. Because every now and then I'll find some crazy winners. Um, I actually never pulled the trigger on them, but uh, you can find Cordovan shoes. If you if you have weird foot sizes, you can find crazy deals on Shell Cordovan, um, Allen Edmonds on eBay. 
Yeah, I need a guy. I need somebody to say, here, you're drinking this bottom. Uh, and like, you, what was the hops I liked? Um, mosaic. I needed somebody to say, like, this is what you like. You like mosaic hops. This beer has mosaic hops. Try that. It's great. And then, like you said, for me, like, what all the different characteristics were is really helpful. Yeah. Gosh, I keep looking at these. I keep looking at these Vibergs I linked earlier, the unlined shell ones, and thinking about how crazy they look. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that I, I could see how somebody would look at this, especially the first image on this page. I could see how they would look at this and say that looks like crap. But um, I just think the way that those have worn in are so insane. And there's got to be something to... There's got to be something to it having no lining. I think that's why it's it's creased in the way it has. And it, you can see it started to slowly drape on the, uh, like the shaft of the boot. It's starting to like fall over a little bit. And I wonder, I bet you the tongue of that boot, it's not. The tongue of the boot is not cordovan. So that's very drapey. It's probably a combination tan leather. But I can't stop looking at this boot. <laughs> I want that. And uh, I actually asked, it's getting hot over here. I actually asked um, Nick Horween what he thought about me taking out the lining in my boots. And he said, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm sort of stuck with them, but I really want that. All right, guys, I think, I think I've run out of uh, energy to say interesting stuff. <laughs> so unless you want me to just play the guitar and drink this beer, I think I'm going to just do that on my own. <laughs> Let me know if you guys want to know anything more about, let's talk about uh, recap. You want to know anything more about Great Divide, which I don't know much about, so don't ask. <laughs> if you want to know about these Allen Edmonds, if you want to know more about these, I'd be glad to tell you about my experience with them. I think they're really cool. I would wear them with jeans. I have worn them to a wedding successfully, and people thought it was really fun. I thought it was really fun. And then we had that whole deep chat on veg tanned and chrome tan leather which uh, I think I probably just muddied the waters quite a bit. But if you want to know more about that stuff, bring it. Need longer headphones. Um, Michael Wang says, I bought my first pair of Allen Edmonds today. Black Park, yes. Black Park Avenues during their factory second sale. That's a good call. And those Park Avenues, let me bring this up. Those Park Avenues are great uh, for like going to work. They're really good. They're like the classic dress shoe. Now, did you get them in Shell Cordovan or did you just, um, I actually don't even know if they offer other leathers. Maybe they have like half skin. Uh, I bet you didn't know that I played the bass. They have it in shell, but I got it in normal ones. Looking for, looking to get strand in brown and shell, maybe. Yeah. Did you buy them in Shell though? Because uh, that's a huge move. That's a good call. And the strands. Ugh, let me look up the strands. I, those are the classic ones too. Yeah, those are the cap toes. And they're borged. Yeah, those are sweet. That's like this, right? 
That's like this without the, it's a cap toe version of this. And they're really cool. They don't have a welt either. In fact, they don't have this, uh, this Goodyear welt. It looks, and I have just learned recently about the welting stuff. It looks like those strands don't have, they're probably stitched straight to the midsole. And I believe that's called a Blake stitch. Um, but that is good if you're going to dress them up because uh, it's a lot more of a sleek look. I think those look great. And I kind of like wearing those more formal shoes with jeans and stuff because I don't oop, focus. <laughs> that's not going to work. Sorry about the camera. McAllister. Let me look up McAllister. Oh, <laughs> if you just search McAllister, it doesn't give you the shoes. Turns out. Yeah. So those McAllisters don't have this um, Goodyear welt either. But it's definitely like a more sleek look without that big chunky welt. Maybe that's why they chose to do that is to give it more of a casual look. Those are cool though. You know, if I work at, you know where I work, I don't need to wear a suit. In fact, we have little uniforms there. Um, so I don't even have to think about what to wear. Um, but if I had to wear a suit, I would go Park Avenue all the time and resold them until I couldn't resold them anymore. I just think they're so clean. And uh, I actually like those strands a bit too. What else do I like? I mean, Alan Edmonds, it, they have so many styles. I mean, what's up? Uh, you know, the, what are the names of the boots that they have? They're so cool. Why can't I find it? Shoes. Boots. They have a whole section of boots. The ones I was thinking of are... I think it's called Higgins Mill. There they are. Higgins Mill. And wow, they're on sale right now. Everything's on sale. These guys are crazy. Oh, these Higgins Mill look terrible. They have like a... Sorry, Alan Edmonds. They have like a camouflage... Um, quarter panel that looks awful don't buy that um sorry michael did you check out the online suede ones made with they made with mass drop i did you know why i ignored them though is because it's not horween but it, i believe i know who made that leather and it's cool and it, i remember they were like 199 bucks and i thought that was a really good deal uh, what do you think about mass drop changing their name to just drop um, so you are all the same mess drop. Yeah. It's just drop now. I'm going to look and see if they have those elements. Yeah. I, I think they've done a few rounds of those chukas and it looks like they're up right now. No, it's ended. Yeah. They're cool. I, it, to me, to me, it doesn't look like they, um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not a huge Chucka guy, but the way that the the shape of it looks weird. Like, doesn't it look like a too much of a triangle? At least the one I'm looking at. They look really comfortable. Here's a better photo that doesn't look like a triangle. Like, so they look inconsistent. Like, the black pair on Mass Drop looks perfect. The brown pair looks like it's a triangle and it looks weird the blue pair the navy looks a little bit better the green looks weird the light color looks cool and then the uh darker brown or the uh what would you call that they don't even say the colors on here this other color the last color looks kind of weird it's like the the shape of the toe box is wrong or not the toe itself but like the the upper part just below the laces, it looks weird. And maybe it's just the angle. 
I would love if they showed it on a person, but of course, oh, they have, they do have that. It looks a little weird. I don't know. Something's off with that one for me. What else you got? I think we're done. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's do one more thing. Let's look at mass drop and see what they got going on. So for me and my mass drop personal thing, which they've linked me up as like a verified vendor for Ashland. Uh, I've got 382 endorsements. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Um, and they changed the whole thing around because you used to have like categories that they would give you. And now it doesn't have mine. But for me, uh, oh, it does have them. Here's the things that I'm interested in on Drop, according to what I selected years ago. Uh, apparel, audio file, blades, everyday carry, flashlight, PC gaming. I don't really go in there. Photography, it's cool. Style accessories, tech and watches yeah I'm, michael i'm glad you found us on there um believe it or not ashland was one of the first vendors on mass drop ever i have an email from i don't know how long ago it is but um one of their first uh employees there reached out to me to to sell on the site and it seemed like a scam at the time like most emails from people you don't know seem um so i was kind of like put off by it and i remember back then um they were like really happy if they sold maybe like five things um that was like a lot for them because they didn't really have an audience and so it was like that for about a year they they slowly started growing and um, now we've the, the relationship has sort of um, stagnated between Ashland and Mastrop, but they they still do cool stuff. It's just that the people that I used to interact with aren't there anymore. And I believe I could be wrong. The people that I used to interact with were more of like curators, and it seems like they've sort of just handed over everything that was that was curated to buyers. So now they just have buyers that just contact me and say like we want to run this again and i say yes or no but um what used to happen with mass drop is they would they would ask you hey phil uh i was looking at at your website today and you know i really like that bottle opener you had do you think we could do a run of that bottle opener in xyz colors because those are colors i think look really cool and then i would respond hell yeah and then we would uh, make them and send them over to mass drop and then they take photographs of them and put it up on the site and see if it sells but nowadays they don't even ask me for new stuff so somebody here from mass drop is looking and uh watching me play a sweet lick uh <laughs> uh if you're if you're watching this that's an that would be my suggestion is to try to curate new stuff into mass drop because I used to look at every and they send an email every day. I used to look at every email and go, wow, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Wow. That's cool. And now I open, I don't even open them anymore because I know it's boring. It's something I've seen already and they need new stuff. Let me rant about everybody. Um, but I'm so glad that you found us on there and I still like, I'm looking at them right now and they have like, I don't really care about these headphones, but they have the, I bought this top that they have on there. I think it's really cool. They have really cool flashlights. They got this, these glasses, but I've seen all this before. And I bought the mass drop Fostex headphones. They're in a box right in front of me that I can see and they broke and then they wouldn't support me on fixing them. And I didn't even want them fixed for free. I said, just tell me where to, somebody to talk to, to fix them. And they said, no, we don't support those, but you still sell them. That sucks. Don't, screw over your customers um they've got this like really cheap belt from british belt company that props to them for being able to sell a belt for 35 bucks i can't even buy the leather for that much all right 
the leather and the hardware itself is like most of that. I, I don't know how they get it that cheap. Something's up. Um, but they have like cool stuff and it just seems a little bit more price driven now and less like cool driven. And I wish they were more cool driven. That's all. All right. Uh, what did you say? Um, any thoughts on bringing in other craftsmen from the leather industry to have a chat? Maybe they like beer as well. Yeah. Well, that that is a great idea because obviously I can't hold uh, – this has been two hours now. I can't hold a conversation for two hours without prepping. But if I had my buddy Nick Horwin here, he and I could chat all day about stuff, and it would be really easy, and then I wouldn't have to do any work. So, in fact, that would be a good segue to end this on because next Thursday um, – my my coworker from Horween, his name is Esteban. He is the, chem the chemist at Horween, and he runs the lab at Horween. And he also has a, a bit of a tanning education. So I was thinking it'd be really, really cool to have him come in and explain the chemistry behind some of the tanning. And I'm he's really good at the science of stuff and maybe not so good at like and Esteban, if you're reading or hearing this, I'm sorry, but maybe not so good at like bringing it down to earth. He's kind of up here with knowledge, which is great, but I'm going to try to rope him in. I'm going to try to get him to relate it to something that you care about. Um, so he's going to be great to have in. I have, um, you know, all these things I'm going to talk about are mostly Horween related. Um, I haven't talked to him yet, but I want to get George Vlogos from Oak Street in here to talk about all the boots that he's made and uh, like what what started him. I kind of know a lot of it already, but I think um, it'd be I don't what I don't know from George is like how his day to day works and how the company works and how he's progressing their brand because I have a pair of boat shoes from Oak Street from when they first started it must have been within their first year and back then they only had these boat shoes that, that i still have a couple pairs of um but nowadays he makes all sorts of different stuff so i really want to know like his trajectory of what oak street is going to be because it seems like they're just going straight up so i want to get him on i can have my business partner dan cordova on he is uh kind of shy and nick is too both these guys are kind of shy around cameras so um i don't want to force them to come and do something they don't want to do although i know we would have a fun time and i know it would turn out great and i know you would like it uh i just don't want to force them to do something that they don't want to do um i haven't talked to ray yet but i would love to get ray in here maybe ray is even checking this out right now um i would love to get you in here to share a beer with me and just talk about leather finishing because I don't know precise details of how to finish the leather. And I think it'd be really cool to have him here. Um, I lost a bet. <laughs> I lost a bet to skip Horween this week. Um, I bet him that Tesla would hit $500 a share before it hit $200 a share. And he won. So I owe Skip dinner. But maybe I can convince him to come here afterwards to talk. Um, cause Skip is such a good person and he's a great person to listen to speak. Um, and you would get so much, so many cool stories out of him. Um, so he'd be cool to have on. Uh, I've got the guys from Chicago comb. This one's actually in the books. When is that the books for, um, calendar, calendar.com. Uh, so on June 15th, at 7 p.m., I'm planning to have in uh, John, the owner of Chicago Comb, come in and chat about what they do. And they, they're really cool local guys, too. I know um, some of the people that run breweries in the town. So I would love to get – I'd like to bring, like, a laptop and maybe this microphone and the webcam uh, to these breweries and do some chats there. And that would be really fun. Um I really want to know, like Nick has a lot of connections with the people that make uh, like shot. He knows people that run shot. 
he knows uh, the people that run 316. I don't think I'd get them live, but it'd be really cool to do like a side by side cam with um, those guys. But they're like way bigger names than me, <laughs> so it might be a little uh, little tough to do on my own here. But that's sort of the aspiration. It'd be cool to share drinks with these guys. It might be really fun for me to buy a six pack or four pack of beer and send it to them, so they have it ready to go for our chat, and then we can uh, do drinking leather together. So that's kind of where, that's what I'm feeling about this. I'm, uh, my wife's been out of town for the last couple, or yesterday and today. So I spent um, my free time here doing these chats. So um, I don't know if I'll be able to do them as often as this um, because I need to spend as much time with my wife as I can um, because we both have really crazy schedules. We basically don't stop working um, pretty much ever. Um, so when I get a chance to spend time with her, I'm going to do that instead of with you. And I'm sorry, <laughs> but, um, I want to spend as much time as I can here with you. Um, so the next thing on the event list currently, and this could change cause things happen, but, um, next Thursday, the 30th of May, I'm planning to have on the chemist the leather chemist at horween and um you know what would be cr really cool we can do this right now is if you have concepts or things you want to know and maybe it's a little hard to know like what you would ask but if there are things you want to know about leather tanning um cue those up start thinking about what you would ask this guy because he is the um he's the only person that i've met that's so into chemistry that he's tattooed chemical um like uh, what is it called organic chemistry symbols on his arm and stuff. So he's really, really into chemistry. Um, and I think he's fun too. Esteban's really fun. Um, so we'll have a fun time um, either way, but I think it'd be cool if you could throw him some curveballs and give him some real good questions. Um, Cause I want to see what this guy's made of. And uh, maybe we'll do one of those things where, you know, if you don't know the answer, just make you drink <laughs> on Thursday and then go to work the next day. Um, so that's cool. So we really honestly right now, I only have two things on the schedule. It's the Thursday, the 30th at 5 PM or maybe 6 PM. We're just going to come here after work to my house. And then on June the 15th, I'm going to have John from Chicago comb. I'm out of town between those weeks. So I'm not sure how often I'll be here, but um, you'll probably get, you know, two or three hour notice, uh, if I decide to do another live thing, um, tomorrow I'm going to try to make a video of, uh, that won't be live, but I'll try to make a video of me explaining what we did on episode one. Um, in fact, I forget what we talked about now. Oh, the leather terms. I'm going to do a big ranting video, sort of trying to help add to the knowledge base of what all these leather terms are like full grain and top grain and genuine leather, which are all those terms really bother me now. <laughs> so I'm going to get real upset and make a video of me trying to clear it up. Um, because I don't think these people are trying to mislead on purpose. I just, I just know too much and um, I, nobody else is talking about it. So I'm going to do it. So tomorrow I'm going to make that video. You can expect that out. Uh, I'm, Filmed a video of me doing a demo of this key case that I ripped today. In case you missed that, that was a highlight. We found out that veg tan leather was not perfectly strong as they advertised. It easily rips. Yeah. Um, so I did a demo of that. I still have to edit that up. Um, I'm not very good at video. It takes me a long time. And... Um, I'm much more comfortable just talking to you like this, like a real person than tr trying to do like a real presentation. Um, so I'm going to try to shoot videos more like I'm just chatting like this, but then I'll have to edit it and that takes a long time and I'm not very good at it. Um, and I've got work to do too. So this is sort of like all, um, I'm sure this is all gravy as I would call it. This is all ice cream as Skip Horween would call it. <laughs> this is sort of the extra stuff that, trying to do in my spare time um to get back to you guys because um you know 
I don't talk about Ashlyn a, a whole lot on here, but um, the amount of support that we've received over the last eight years, and in particular, the last five years has been overwhelming. So um, it's really fun for me to be able to show up at Horween and make a crazy leather, or maybe it's even a mistake and maybe we messed up on a leather and I think it looks cool. It's really awesome for me to say, you know what, Skip, don't throw that in the trash. I'll buy it from you and you don't have to lose money. And then I take it and I make it into something crazy. And then you guys buy it and you think it's really cool too. And then everybody wins and uh, we all get something special out of it. So to me, that's like a really cool thing that gets me out of bed every day, you know? Ooh, David Rose with a good one. Uh, David Rose says you might think of doing Wikipedia entries for leather terms. That's my go-to for learning uh, new terms and concepts. Yeah, you know what? I, I will admit to you, I have so like what would I even search? Like Wikipedia leather? Like what do they say? There you go. I guess I would search like full grain leather. And I, I bet you it's so frustrating because they um just the terms that they use make no sense. Okay. They do have vegetable tan leather, chrome tan leather in here. They do not have uh, combination tan leather. So I am giving you more knowledge than the ultimate Wikipedia. Um, but they do have, okay, they do have top grain leather here, full grain, corrected grain. What they don't have, notably, is bonded. Oh, they do have it. I'm sorry. Okay, top. let's do this real quick because this is like my main pain point right now. Under grades on the leather section of Wikipedia, they say grades. In general, leather is produced in following grades. Top grain leather. So like, first of all, that's not a grade. That's just a thing. But they say top grain leather includes an outer layer of hide known as grain, which features finer, more densely packed fibers resulting in strength and durability. We just saw that's not true. Depending on thickness, it may contain some uh, some of the more fibrous underlayer known as corium. That's true. But, you know, what's interesting here is they're saying full grain leather, corrected grain leather, and nubuck are top grain leathers. That is what I th I think, too. Like, every, every leather you see is top grain leather. I don't know why... <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting angry. I don't know why Saddleback says top grain leather is, like, below... It's like second best. It's all top grain leather. It, top grain means just leather that has grain on it, whether it's corrected or not. So that's really upsetting to me still. But this Wikipedia actually is pretty accurate, like the way they tiered it out here, where they sub subcategorize full grain leather, corrected grain leather, and new buck. They categorize all of those as top grain, and that is true. So somebody did some actual work here. Um, they say full grain contains the entire grain layer without any removal of the surface. Rather than wearing out, it develops a patina during a useful lifetime. Not necessarily. It is usually considered the highest highest quality leather. Yeah, that's true. Furniture and footwear are often made from full grain leather. No. In fact, often not. Uh, full grain leather is typically finished with the uh, soluble aniline dye. No. So, you know what we should do next time is go through these terms with Esteban, the chemist at Horween, and he'll crap all over these. <laughs> he'll do a better, more upset job than me. But, like, even you, I used to like Wikipedia, and now I can't like it anymore. It's just not, it's not the full truth. It's, like, misleading and not true. It, it's not true. Um, but, yeah, maybe I should just edit these. Yeah, that's a good call. All right, David and uh, the seven other people here. Gosh, it's been a long uh, two and a, two and two hours and fifteen minutes here. Um, so what I'm going to do is log off here and go rock out <laughs> and finish this beer. But it's been such a pleasure to hang out on a uh, Saturday night on a holiday weekend for us non Canadians, and probably the rest of the world doesn't have this day or this holiday weekend. 
Um, but thanks so much for spending it, uh, spending a couple hours with me here. It's kind of a crazy thing to think about the hundred year old tannery I work for about how the internet wasn't even a thought and talking to people in a large forum like this wasn't ever a thought when they started that company. And it wasn't even a thought 10 years ago. So it's kind of a cool thing that we're doing here. And again, the goal is just to give you guys as much information and value so you can make a good decision about what you're buying. Um, whether it's, it's from Horween or somebody else, because I will be very honest about every tannery. I just don't happen to know a lot about them. Um, so that would be a good thing for me to do is get a guess from another tannery. But just want to let you guys know what my agenda here is. Just kind of want to chill out and talk about leather, drink good beers, show you some, some of my shoes. Um, eventually I will run out of shoes to show you and then I'll have to buy crap from eBay. But uh, I really, really appreciate you guys um, coming and hanging out. And I learned a lot of stuff from you too about these different types of hops. Um, so appreciate you guys and hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And thanks again for hanging out. All right. I'll see you later. Oh, we got to hit end.